Hey folks, Prepper Princess. So this is going to be a different type of video that I don't think I've ever done before. It's not a live chat, but it is going to be an in-depth discussion. It's not really a discussion because nobody's talking to me. It's going to be an in-depth video of talking about getting out of debt, extreme cost-cutting savings, uh, extreme money-saving tactics. So um, first and foremost, so the majority of people, 70% of people in the United States have debt. They are in debt. The average debt for a millennial is over $150,000. I believe it's almost up to $180,000. And um, that does not include their, that's including assets, negative, negative equity. So debt. All right, so let me start first and foremost with student loans. Student loans should be the first to go because they are not forgivable in bankruptcy court. So if you have credit card debt, student loan, um, medical debt, you've got car payment, house payment, first thing to go should be student loans. And regardless of if you agree with any of these suggestions or advice, if you disagree, that's fine. Uh, just take what I have to say and in one ear out the other and go on to the next bit of information. Now, student loan debt, uh, the interest rate on the loan is going to be lower than, say, a credit card, a car payment, a uh, mortgage, medical debt, things like that. The, the interest rate is going to be lower. But if you are on the brink of bankruptcy, it needs to go first because it will not be forgiven. So even if you go bankrupt, you still have to pay your student loans. Credit cards. So most people have between i believe it's four and seven credit cards per household with an average debt of about seventeen thousand dollars so dave ramsey's method and i agree with this method because it's the way that i did it and i can't see myself doing it any other way is to get rid of the credit card that has the smallest amount of debt first and then work your way up regardless of percentage or apr now here's what i did i had four credit cards when i was getting out of debt and I took one of the credit cards and just paid it off. Boom, gone. It was like a $700 balance. The rest of them were in, the three of them combined added up to about $14,000. I called one another credit card company that I had nothing to do with. I asked if they had 0% balance transfers for 24 months. I found a credit card that did and I transferred the, the, I think that the credit limit on that one was like 12,000. So I transferred everything that I could to that credit card and then I paid off the 2,000 as quickly as possible and then started taking everything and putting it into the last credit card which had a 0% balance, a zero APR. I don't know if I would have done it differently but then after I paid my credit cards I wasn't on the verge of bankruptcy, so the student loans were coming, the student loan and the car loan were last. So I paid off all the credit cards first. Boom, credit cards are gone, totally gone, cut up, ex you close it, I don't care about my FICO score right now, gone, I don't want them. And then I went on to my car loan. Uh, I wanted to get rid of the car loan, also $14,000, paid everything towards that, and I was ultra focused. I was hyper focused. I would not spend money on anything. I didn't buy clothes, shoes, socks, uh, barely any food. It was pretty much rice and beans for a year and a half. Uh, I worked two jobs, 6 a.m. until midnight, six days a week. And on the seventh day, I typically had a shift, an uh, eight hour shift. And if that shift wasn't going on on that last day, I would go to labor ready, which is you go in and you work for the day and you get paid for the day. And then uh, student loans were next. And I eventually got rid of everything. I did it while I was living in an apartment on my own. Um, sorry, this wasn't when I was on my own. It was when I had a roommate that didn't pay rent. And that's just a whole other story. And the only way, let's imagine just for a second, if you were to get sick or your spouse was to get sick or God forbid a child got sick and one of the parents had to quit working, the only way the only way that you can make it on is no debt. That includes your mortgage and any debt that you have. Now, I recently made a video, uh, living below the poverty line in luxury or something along those lines. I got a lot of people uh, giving me a lot of hate and that's fine, it's YouTube, that's the world that we live in. And um, 
I wouldn't be able to live below the poverty line if I had debt, if I had a car payment, student loan, mortgage, rent, anything like that. I wouldn't be able to do it. And there is, and here's another funny thing, another funny aspect is that most of you who follow me, I'm sure a lot of you know Living on a Dime. Um, she is Tara and Jill, and they talk about how they got out of debt. Jill did it on like five, she raised two teenagers on $500 a month, which seems insane, but she did it. Um, and the only reason she was able to do that was because she had no debt. There was no mortgage on their house. They had no credit card debt, no debt. And the only way, that's the only way she could have done it. Um, and that's the only way that I could have done it. And, and I think that a lot of people are so accustomed to living in debt that they think that that's the only way that there is to life. And that is not true. I'm telling you there is light at the end of the tunnel. If you want to be debt free and you become hyper focused, you can be debt free. And then those people who are still in debt, they're going to be so jealous of you and they're going to hate you. They're going to hate on you. <laughs> they're, they're going to tell you everything that you've done wrong with your finances by getting out of debt and you can just laugh at them all the way to the bank. Um, I will be drinking this because it's going to be a long video. All right, so one of the things I want to, once you want you guys to really open your mind, I mean really open your mind when I start talking about these things. Okay, so let's start with food. Um, in our society, people are so accustomed to having an abundance of food everywhere. Any choice, anything they want at any time, just put it on the credit card and everything's going to be okay. And then when I talk to people about making meals that I make, I, you know, I do get insulted about my meals not being good enough. Um, here's the deal is that anybody who... Anybody who can't, who says I can't, they obviously can. But anyone who is doing better than you, like say I sit here, let's say I sit here and I say, um, I live on $10,000 a year and um, I have a half million dollars in the bank. You're going to get people who, if anyone is doing better than you, so let's say I live on 10000 and I've got a half mil in the bank, right? So somebody else who lives on $9,000 a year and has $750,000 in the bank is not going to make, they're not going to insult you. They're gonna be like, well, hey, they're doing pretty good. So the only people who are gonna insult you are people that are doing worse than you. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. Keep that in mind with every YouTube video you watch in the comment section. Anyone who has been through what you've been through and is on their way up and they're a little bit further in their journey, they are never gonna insult you. They're gonna be like, go get it girl, or get it man, You great job. You know, you could do it. Um, the people who are going to put you down and insult you are people who, uh, they're not where you're at. They're, they're simply not as successful as you. They're not as good at, as you at saving money and they don't and most people are stressed out and don't know how to get out of it so just keep that in mind when you when I bring these things and start talking about these things so food um, it, you have to simplify and I'm not talking about eating just rice and beans every day for you know a year and a half like I did so let's say you have a family or one child you're a single mother what whatever your case may be so let's talk about breakfast Okay, so breakfast is the cheapest meal of the day. It always is. And people make these elaborate meals with uh, waffles and fruit cups. And it's like they're serving a 10 course meal at breakfast time when really um, you are just trying to get some energy for the day. So making a pot of coffee is great. Uh, coffee is extremely cheap and it's personally my favorite thing to drink. Um, I only drink coffee and water or lemon water, flavored, flavored water. Uh, but you know, the orange juice, the apple juice, um, that stuff is really just pretty much like giving them a soda. If you look at the sugar content in it, it's not healthy for children. So if your children will not go, absolutely will not go without orange juice or, or an apple juice or milk or whatever, water it down. It's simple. You can add a third water to your one third drink apple juice and you just saved 30%. Uh, it's, think of it as a coupon, going to the store with a 30% off coupon, right? So instead of spay, paying $3 for your orange juice, you just made it last longer and really only paid two. Same with your milk. 
You know, you get whole vitamin D milk, you add a third water to it, you just saved 30% on your milk. Same with, same with everything. It's the same with all drinks except soda, but I, I haven't drank soda in, honestly, I can't remember how long I don't drink soda. It's very bad for you, very bad for your teeth, and it, uh, it offers no nutrition, so you can drink 12 sodas and still be thirsty. Um, so the food, so cheap. I mean, you don't have to do a 10 course meal. If you go out and buy a dozen eggs and you're single, right? You can cook two eggs and have a piece of toast. Two eggs, a piece of toast, put some butter on it and cut it diagonal. Spread it on your plate so it looks like it's huge because plates are huge these days. But toasted eggs, that's a very cheap, very easy way to do it. And the dozen eggs will last you six days. Um, on the seventh day, maybe you have two pieces of toast. <laughs> Uh, you can put jam on it, you can put butter, peanut butter, peanut butter and banana, whatever you like. It's your choice, okay? But it's extremely cheap. Oatmeal, Quaker Oats, or even the off-brand. You get 30 servings in Quaker Oats for about three bucks. That's 10 cents a serving. You, um, personally, I like eating it cold with just water and a sprinkle of sugar on top with some banana chips. And that is what I've been eating for breakfast for about four and a half years, but I'm starting to change it up a little bit with some muffins. That brings me to the next one, muffins. Jiffy Mix costs about 28 cents and makes a dozen muffins. You can go and get blueberry muffin mix, Jiffy. You make yourself a dozen muffins. You can have two muffins every day for six days and one muffin or one muffin on the, for five days and then one muffin the sixth and seventh day. And that's breakfast. I mean, you've got your blueberry muffin and it was 28 cents for a week. I. I don't see, <laughs> you can have two muffins, I don't know. And people are making elaborate things. You don't have to do that. Pancakes and pancake syrup. Krusty's pancake mix is like $7 for a family size for like 220 pancakes for $7. I can't even do the calculations on a serving. I think, I know that servings are two pancakes at like 220 pancakes, 110 servings divided by $7. You guys can do the math. I'm sure you'll comment in the section below. And then a dollar um, syrup. That's it. You, you just got breakfast for 10 or 20 cents. Okay. And you can do that for, and you can switch it up. Oatmeal one day, eggs and toast another, muffins another day, uh, pancakes and syrup another day. And you can go through that cycle of four different things on the menu every day for years and you'll still have your variety. And it's not just blueberry muffins. You can do lemon poppy seed muffins, almond poppy seed muffins, uh, banana nut, uh, lemon muffins. I, the list goes on and on, on the, for the different types of muffins. Um, lunch, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really that big on lunch. I don't, I don't eat lunch. Yeah, I don't, I don't eat much. Uh, but you know, lunch, people go out. Oh my God. I used to work. I had so many coworkers that complained that they were broke all the time. And every single day they would go out to lunch. They'd go and spend $10 on lunch. And I did not understand how they could complain about being broke when they spent $10 a day on lunch. And just make your, okay. So let me, let me start here. If you like potato chips, okay, you like bad food, I don't care, whatever. Get a big bag of potato chips, okay? A big bag, like king size, family size, giant bag of your, and get sour cream and onion and barbecue and nacho cheese. Get like as many chips as you want, as long as they come in the big bag. Now, <laughs> here's what you do. Instead of going out and buying the individual size potato chips, use sandwich bags and put potato chips into the sandwich bag. So you've got this big bag of potato chips that all of a sudden becomes 10 or 15 small potato chips that you can take to lunch every day for two weeks. Okay, so you're, well, I don't know how much chips are, three bucks? I, I don't know. Take your $3 over two weeks, $3 divided by 14 is like 20 cents, whatever and make yourself a sandwich, whether it be peanut butter and jelly. Um, I don't buy deli meat because I always use leftover in my leftover meat in my sandwich. So you can make a steak sandwich and just steak with either red bell pepper or onion um, and lettuce is delicious. 
Uh, same with chicken, you can do tuna, whatever you like. But um, the deli meat is so expensive for what you get. I don't purchase deli meat anymore. I use leftovers. And leftovers in a sandwich, they're, it's amazing, it's delicious. I love it. Um, let's talk about fruit for a second. So fruit, one of the things that I think that, you, that is the best thing that I do personally to save money on food is I only go around the outside aisles of the store and anything that I need on the inside aisles is very few and far between. So what is on the outside aisles at the grocery store? Fruit, vegetables, meat, and dairy, sometimes bread. And I don't buy packaged food. Occasionally, I'll go in there and get like some granola bars or what are the uh, Red Baron's frozen pizza. That's another thing, spending money on pizza. You know, you go and spend 20, 40 bucks on pizza and it's just like, why didn't you just go get, you know, two for $5 pizzas, Red Baron's at the store. That's like, you could have saved yourself $35. So don't go ordering pizza, go and buy pizza and make it. It tastes just as good. There's no difference to me. Um, so lunches are super easy. If you like fruit, um, I highly recommend a French fry press. Um, I'll show you, uh, hold on a sec, I'll show you what that is. Okay. Okay, so this is a french fry press and you can do it with, you, it's used for potatoes, but you can do it with fruit. You put the potato in here and you crush it and then they come out this side like potatoes. As you can tell, I just pretty much just used it. Okay. Now with fruit, the funny thing is, is that kids generally don't like fruit or they, they it is the original fast food fruit. Um, apples, pears, grapes, peaches, tangerine, tangerines, you name it. Um, and with this, not an orange, you're not gonna put an orange in there, obviously, but pears and apples, my gosh, you would be amazed at how fast kids will eat carrots, uh, apples, when it comes out of this thing. And the fiber in, in those fruits is extremely filling. It's, it sure does beat gummy worms and uh, Welsh's fruit snacks, I'm telling you, in terms of nutrition and price and all around good for you-ness. It's amazing. And in fact, uh, last night and today, last night I had a honey crisp apple that I put in here. I was so full by the time I ate it because you really, it, and it looks like French fries and kids love French fries. So they're easy to, I don't know what it is. They're easier to pick up, easier to eat, and it really works. And I would recommend one of these. You can get them on Amazon. I don't, I'll, 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 I'll write a, I'll put a link in the description and I gotta write that down so I don't forget. Okay. So that's my big thing on vegetables. Um, when it comes to like desserts or whatever, so you're thinking you've got a sandwich made out of leftover meat from your rotisserie chicken or whatever. So you've got your sandwich, okay. You've got an apple, probably cost, I wanna say 75 cents, and they, that you cut up real cool, and then you've got your potato chips for like 20 cents. So you spent about a dollar, dollar twenty, dollar twenty-five to make your lunch, and you can do that every day for you and or your kids, <clears throat> and husband, wife, whatever. And you can do that, and it can be a different sandwich every day, it can be a different fruit every day, it can be a different type of potato chip every day, and it's, you just gotta think ahead. You gotta be a little bit organized in the food that you're preparing. Uh, desserts, so um, instead of having like, well, first of all, there's tons of desserts you can make that are super cheap. Um, one of the things that I do is I'll take like strawberry, grape, any leftover strawberry, grape, pineapple, just like the little tidbits that you weren't gonna use. I put them in my Jack LaLanne juicer and then I put them in those little popsicle uh, thingies and I freeze them and I make them into popsicles and you and it's kind of cool because every time you make popsicles it's going to have a different flavor because you're using different types of fruit so um if like you can take the end pieces the end pieces off of this of the apple or the pear or whatever it is and just take the end pieces and put them in the Jack LaLanne juicer um along with your grapes apples strawberries whatever and I make them into popsicles and I love those I think they're great. I don't, I don't like ice cream at all. 
Um, I mean, I think last time I had ice cream was probably a year and a half ago and I'm very, very particular about it. So I only eat mocha chip on a sugar cone from Lord's ice cream and um, <laughs> there isn't one here and that's okay. I'm okay with that. I don't eat ice cream. But if you're gonna be doing ice cream, you don't wanna give a kid a, kid a bowl and have them put on like four scoops of ice cream. You wanna get smaller bowls. I have those as well. Let me go get them. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, I definitely want this to be kind of visual. So this is a regular bowl. This is a bowl of on crack. So with a regular bowl, this is just a Walmart bowl mainstays. Um, first of all, the size of bowls has grown by about 50% since the 1950s. Same with plates. Plates are too big, bowls are too big. This is what I use for ice cream. You just, you, all you get is one scoop. That's all you get. Um, this one is seven ounces. Microwave and oven safe. I get this to make this super weird. It's time for me to get a new phone. I film with my iPhone. First, my subscribers are complaining that the volume is bad. And now, while I'm shooting in the middle of a video, music comes on and then the video stops. So it's time for a new iPhone. It's getting too many errors. Um, Sorry about that. So you can put as many toppings as sprinkles on it as you like or caramel syrup, but just giving a child or yourself the right size for what you should be eating, it's gonna help a lot, okay? That's a huge difference. So that's important. Portion control is important. And again, that's why 70% of people in the United States are out of debt and 70% of people in the United States are overweight or obese. It's control. It's a control thing. Um, that's the dessert dinner. So dinner, um, when you are looking at a plate, I don't have a plate. So you're looking at a plate. Let's pretend this is a square plate. Yes, it's very pretty. My aunt made this. It's a, it's a little notebook. I keep telling her she needs to start selling on Etsy, but she doesn't want to. She's very creative. So let's say this is a rectangular plate. Let's divide the plate in half. Let's pretend there is a divider right here, right? This should all be vegetables, the whole half of it. This, and then we're gonna cut this half in half. So you've got one here and on this whole side is vegetables. We're gonna cut this in half. This should be four ounces of meat for women or six for men. Get yourself a scale if you have to. And it's a lot less than you think a lot less than you think. Three or four ounces ain't nothing. Some people say a deck of cards. Some people say the size of your, the back of your fist. Some say the size of the inside of your fist. But if you weigh it, three or four ounces is much smaller than my fist. That's for sure. Meat. This should be a starch like a potato or macaroni and cheese or pasta, whatever you call it. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people telling me that, that my choices aren't great. I don't care what you think. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm a healthy BMI. I've got a healthy bank account. So what do you have? You're not a nutritionist and you're not a financial person. So don't, don't bother me with that. So in half, all vegetables. And then this half gets cut in half, meat, starch, all right? Potatoes are extremely cheap. Potatoes are awesome. Let's let's move on to dinner. Um, potatoes, I, I always buy a five pound sack of potatoes. Sack? Bag? Whatever. Five pounds of potatoes. Uh, usually about maybe four or five dollars. And that lasts me for a month and I eat potatoes a lot. Uh, you can make them a million different ways. Fry, you can put them in this thing and you can make, you can make french fries. Uh, you can... I don't know, you can bake them, boil them, uh, saute them, do whatever you want with your potatoes. They're delicious. Um, <clears throat> other cheap meals are things like quesadillas. Most people think of quesadillas an, as an appetizer. So you have a rotisserie chicken that you're now using for leftover meals and lunch. Why not take a few scraps of those chicken, put put it on a with some cheese on a couple of tortillas and just stick it on the 
the gr grill or whatever for flip it a few times and you've got dinner. Simplify your food. Think about this, cornbread and chili, chili and cornbread. Hormel chili is like a buck a can and it serves two. Okay, so 50 cents and then maybe you wanna sprinkle some cheese on top and get all fancy, that's great, good for you. Uh, cornbread, again, jiffy, it's like 28 cents and it makes like 12. So, I mean, you're looking at like two bucks for, for a dollar a meal, a dollar a person, it makes two meals. You get your, your chili, um, you've got, that's, it is amazingly delicious. <laughs> I, um, grilled cheese and uh, tomato soup. Uh, my favorite is the tomato basil penne by Progresso. It comes in a blue can. I think that's what it's called. Delicious. It's amazing, especially if you sprinkle a little cheese on top. In fact, now I'm gonna have a quesadilla for dinner and I might have some soup on the side. Serves, each can serves two. Most people take a can and they assume that they, they're supposed to eat the whole can. You're not supposed to eat the whole can. You need to share, <laughs> share with people. The can, cans are usually two or three servings per can. So eat the appropriate serving. Um, I don't eat cereal. Cereal is expensive. It's all sugar, no fiber, and it's not good for you. So um, that's what my oatmeal and banana chips is. That is my that is my cereal. I understand that yogurt is cheap. Um, I I don't like yogurt because of the consistency. It's not a flavor thing, but it's just I can't I can't eat it because of the consistency. But yogurt is very cheap, and if you add uh, you buy granola in bulk and you add your flavored granola. No, that was not a ghost. That was dust. You add your flavored granola to the yogurt. Delicious. Um, actually, yogurt to me, I think if I added enough granola, maybe I could eat the yogurt because it would taste the con it would change the consistency to it. Um, another thing for for dinner, um, you know, you don't have to have a ten course meal. In fact, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box. Now this is very important. Cuba had their peak oil crisis back in the in the 90s and there was this journalist who followed a family around of what they ate in a day post peak oil. It's amazing. Um, it is very humbling because it makes you realize how spoiled we are um, here in the United States. And if you're watching from Canada, the UK, Australia, I have a lot of those subscribers as well. Um, we are so spoiled. So in that video, and I'll, I'll try and find it and put a link. Let me write that down. Um, in that video, it was a journalist who went there. He went to a typical suburban house. I think there was maybe three or four people there and there was this old lady. I loved her. I wanted to give her hugs. Um, so for breakfast, they had coffee. That's all they had. In their backyard, they had chickens and some banana trees. Um, that's all they had. Um, just coffee. That's it. Uh, black coffee. There was no creamer or sugar. And in some countries, they have butter and salt with their coffee. To each their own. So no sugar, no, no creamer or milk. It was just black coffee. Lunch. So he went to like a cochina, I believe it was, for cocina. I always say it wrong. Uh, but he went to one of those work, like a, it's like a workers camp thing, not a camp, but workers and uh, they get lunch while they're working. So he went to one of these places and what he had for lunch was uh, rice, beans, and um, potato. That's it. Uh, it actually looked like a lot to me, a lot of rice and beans. Uh, I should say a lot of rice and then beans and potato. And the potato looked delicious, but um, that's it, um, water. You get water. So he goes to get dinner, and dinner is rice, beans, same thing he had for lunch, but he goes back to this suburban family, rice, beans, and um, they had the chickens in the backyard, so they had some, some eggs and a fried banana, because they had the banana trees, so they had some fried banana. And I believe that they, if he, they, he doesn't mention it, but if you look on the table while they're eating, you can see that there's a tomato that somebody had sliced up and then they, they, you know, it's all about presentation. So they took the tomato and like sprawled it out on a plate to make it look like a full plate of tomato when it was really just one tomato. So they had rice, bean, eggs, fried bananas, and tomato. And for breakfast, coffee, that's it. 
So as you can imagine, having rice and beans every day uh, would be, would you'd probably get tired of it. And, and he mentioned, the journalist mentioned, like, I don't think we can do this. Like as a society, Cuba is used to it and accustomed to it, but we're so spoiled that we wouldn't be able to do it. So imagine if you have your option of five different meals, you know, five, bre five different breakfasts, five different lunches, and five different dinners. They're all cheap and you stick to those. You have variety and deliciousness and you have health and nutrition. Um, so food is, is a really big thing where people can save. You just have to have to simplify and remember that, you know, you don't have to serve a 10 course meal. You can have pancakes and eggs for breakfast, for dinner if you want, but pancakes and eggs, you don't have to have like bacon, sausage, uh, hash browns. Those are all difficult to make. You know, just have yourself a simple, a simple pancake and an egg or two eggs, whatever. Um, and your cup of coffee and believe it or not, the calories add up as well. So people are like, I can't do that because that's not enough food for me. Well, first of all, put yourself on the scale. See if you're, you're one of those seven out of 10 people in the U S that are overweight. If you are, maybe you can eat less and you can put more money in your pocket at the same time and stop complaining that it's not enough to eat for you because more than likely it's more than enough to eat for you. And don't forget as we get older, um, our bodies change, the muscle mass changes, and you typically in your 40s, 30s, you don't, well, 30s are, you still need a lot of food, but in your 40s and moving forward, you're not gonna need as much food as you did in your 20s and 30s because you're not, your muscle mass is not as big as it was unless you're a professional bodybuilder. So in that case, you need to eat a lot. All right, so let's move on to some household expenses. So let's start with everyone talks about ditching the cable and stuff like that. So um, I have a cell phone. When I got, I'm, I'm recording with my cell phone. I have a, a standard iPhone. And I used to have AT&T service that was 74, uh, 74 a month. I called them and I was like, this is really high. And they took it down to 45. Um, I saw no changes in the quality of service or what I was getting. It was like text and data, whatever. And um, I remembered I used to have a flip phone and it was like 25 a month plus tax. So it added up to like 29.89 or whatever. And I was like, I want the deal I used to have on my flip phone. I don't watch videos outside of my house. Um, I, I just use it for talking and texting. That's all I need. And they were like, we don't really have anything like that. So I went over to Cricut Wireless, which is used, the Cricut Wireless is owned by AT&T and they use the AT&T network and they gave it to me. So they gave me $30, that, that includes all the taxes and all the stuff. It's two gigs of data plus unlimited, unlimited talking and texting and that's all I need. I don't know why I'm looking at my phone case as I say this, because the phone is right in front of me. But um, you can definitely lower your cell phone. Phone. If things were really bad, really bad, ditch the cell phone. Get yourself a magic jack. It's about. I think it's. There's different. You can do magic jack. You can do. I mean, there's so many options these days. And and honestly, I think eventually cell phones are gonna be old technology eventually. But you can do. I think it's Z Zoom. Zoom. No, not Zoom. Vumo, Vu, something with V, I'm sorry, but it's VOIP address telephone. So you can do a magic jack. It's like $39.95 and then the service is like free, but you won't, you still have to pay, pay taxes and fees on the service. So it's going to be about four to six bucks a month. So if things are really bad, get rid of your cell phone and get yourself a magic jack. It's free. It works off of, it can work directly on your internet router or on your computer, your modem router or your computer and you can have a phone. You still have a phone, but it's free. Like it's free. Um, when it comes to cable, uh, I have now cut out all cable except my Netflix, which is currently on the standard def option. So I didn't realize that, that this was even an option. I think Netflix is up to like 16, $17 now. Um, when I went to cancel my Netflix service because it was getting too expensive, they said there while I was on the website, it said, hold off before you quit. Do you want to try the standard def option? And, was, and it was only $8.95. Now, after taxes is up to $9.67. That's what's showing up on my bill. It might still be $8.95 and then the $9.67 with tax. But um, 
So I've got my Netflix and um, I'm almost ready to get rid of that too. Why? Because I have a Roku box which uses the internet. I have internet. But the Roku box has... People talk about an antenna. An antenna is... You kind of look at... It's like, okay, well, you like your local channels. Well, on my Roku box... I mean, I can't even tell you how amazing... Like, the Roku box is like my newest... It's not even new. I've had it for a few years, but it's like my favorite discovery. It's like my favorite invention that was discovered. Like, I didn't know it existed. And once I got it, I was like, whoa. Anyway, so it's got like every, it's got all the channels. It's got PBS, CW, it's got kids networks. If you have kids, it's got like kids cartoon networks, cheddar, new, cheddar, cheddar something. Anything you can think of is on that Roku box. Everything that you're paying for in cable is on the box. And I was recently doing Sling TV I love Sling TV. It's amazing for people who are trying to get from like Xfinity or Dish Network and they're trying to like get rid of cable but they're not quite ready. It's an amazing transition because it's 30 bucks a month. And the thing that I wanted to, the reason I held on to Sling TV so long was for Quantum Leap and Ancient Aliens and also uh, The Walking Dead. So here's the deal. I started looking around on my Roku box for more streaming channels. I found NBC. NBC has Quantum Leap. I found Peacock. Peacock has my Ancient Aliens. And then amctv.com on my computer has my Walking Dead. And plus I can see all the stuff, the Walking Dead on Netflix the year after. So everything that I ever wanted in cable TV is on my Roku box and it's free. Okay, free. If you go with like a Amazon Fire Stick, I'm not familiar with them. I'm only familiar with my Roku and because I love it so much, I'm not like, I don't need to change. I don't need to change over to a Fire Stick because it's so much more awesome. The Roku has everything that I need. In fact, I'm watching Ancient Aliens right now. Ancient Aliens with Mr. Rocky Pants. So I'm watching it right now and Later, I'm going to watch Quantum Leap <laughs> or I'll put on some live TV because there's live TV on Roku. It's absolutely amazing. Always. Uh, when it comes to internet, unfortunately, in California, when I lived in California, it was great. My internet was only like 40, 40 something a month because there's so many different companies out there and they all compete for the lowest prices. Well, out here, uh, I, I think I pay either, either 71 or 74. That's the cheapest option available. There are two companies. Um, that work out here. There is, it doesn't matter what the companies are, who cares? Two, co two internet companies in this whole area. And it's either, do you want this one for $74 or do you want this one for $104? Um, I'll take the 74, thank you. And that's it. That's your only option. <laughs> you, you don't even have, and then they try to sell you all this stuff. They're like, do you want TV and phone with that? No, I only want internet. Okay, well, do you want to go with just the phone and internet? No, I only want internet. And then I finally had to say to the girl, I said, if you try and sell me one more thing, I'm going to go with your competitor. And she, it's like she didn't even hear me say it. She goes, I'm really sorry about that. Um, we are required to do this in accordance with our uh, job. So do you want to get internet and dish network? And I'm like, oh my God. No, <laughs> no. All right, so... You've got cable internet. Let's talk about electricity. So people always talk about electricity and how their electric bill is so high. Okay, one of the main things about that is your insulation. Is your house insulated? If it's not, get it. Get it insulated. When I lived in California, that was the very first thing I did uh, when I moved into my mother's house. I had the entire house insulated above and below the firewall and I went up into the attic myself and I put out rollout insulation to the tune of $700. Um, and the blow-in insulation was, I believe, 14, no, it was like 1200 So for $1,900, um, and PG&E gave me a rebate, but for $1,900, I never had to turn on my heater or air conditioner, and if I did, it was very rarely, maybe four times in the winter, I would turn on the heater, and I didn't have a house air conditioner, I just had a window unit in the master bedroom, and I turned it on maybe four times in the summer. I mean... 
absolutely amazing here. Um, I have a fireplace which actually has a fire going in it right now for heat. I also have mini split AC and heater units, but I haven't had to turn on my heater. Um, in the in the summertime, you've got your AC going um, all the time. So what I do, this door behind me is my bedroom. There's another bedroom over there. I sh and I also p installed a barn door right here. So in the summertime, that barn door is closed. The bedroom door is closed. And uh, this area, this entire area is air conditioned. The rest of the house is uh, closed off because it's like when it's 125 degrees outside, it's bad. And there is no attic here, so I can't add insulation. There's no way to insulate the house. Um, and I think that eventually if I replace the siding, which I probably will eventually, uh, I'll put in blown in insulation after the new siding is installed and then, but that's several years down the line, but that's, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So close off rooms that you are not using. And even though it's funny how the electric company will tell you to keep the vents open in rooms that are unused, I find it ironic that people are taking conservation advice from a company that makes money off of you using electricity. Use your brain, folks. Shut off the room, close the vent. I promise. Don't take advice. It's it's like um, I don't. It's like a car salesman. I, no, I can't even. I can't even think of something as ridiculous. Um, I don't. I don't know how to. I don't even know. You guys can just use your brain, okay? Don't <laughs> don't take energy conserving advice from an energy company. That's all I gotta say. Um, so uh, there's that, and then. Um, people will also talk about like, um, I did that, I did that. My electric bills too high. The, the second best thing aside from insulation and shutting off rooms that you're not using, the next best thing is your water heater. Your water heater and your refrigerator are the two highest uh, electric electricity users in your house. So you can turn down your refrigerator and you can turn down your hot water heater. So if you have a, and that's for gas or electric, my water heater is very strange. Well, it's it's strange anyway. I've never seen it. It's in a, a thing I can't get in. Anyway, so what I do with my water heater, this is, you're probably gonna think I'm strange. I don't have it on a timer. Um, every day, I will just turn it off at the breaker. I turn off my water heater. And in the summer, I don't need, my water heater's off all summer. Um, yeah, when it's 125 degrees out and your hot water heater is encased in a metal container, and then the exterior, the thing containing the metal container is also metal in 125 degree heat in Arizona, your water's hot. Like your water's hot without the water, hot water heater being turned on. So in the summer, it's off completely. But every day um, I will take a bath or shower or every other day, whenever I sh should so choose to take a, a shower, um, I'll turn on the hot water about 20 minutes before I'm getting, 20 minutes to a half hour before I'm getting ready to take a bath or shower. And then that will give me the hot water that I need for that. And then I will turn it right back off. Uh, this might not work for somebody who has a lot of family members, but it works for me. Also, I have a low flow shower head. So uh, think about it this way. When, so say your, your water heater is full and then you go to take a shower. Well, as soon as that hot water starts coming out of the faucet, your electric heater, your water heater kicks in to turn back on for that water that it lost that was coming out of the shower head. So um, I turn it, good boy. So the shorter shower you take, the less electricity you're using from your water heater or gas that you're using from your water heater, depending on what kind you have. Um, the low flow faucets not only save you in water, they also save you in energy. Um, and then the refrigerator slash freezer, if you can turn that down, that's going to be your next biggest energy saver. When it comes to light bulbs, now I always get crap of when I recommend CFL or LEDs. Now you can, you can say whatever you like about them. Uh, they are a money saver. The CFLs do have lead mercury in them and they're not easy to recycle. They do, however, supposedly last eight to 10 years. 
but I, pre I prefer the LEDs because the CFLs take a little bit of time to reach maximum brightness and um, the they use more wattage than the LEDs. So LED stands for light emitting diode and you can get LED bulbs that use anywhere from seven to nine watts. Uh, as opposed to an incandescent that will use anywhere from 60, 75 to like 95 watts. They, the incandescent bulbs are very old technology and they radiate a lot of heat. Um, so if you live in a warmer area or a warmer climate, it's actually going to be even worse because it'll kick on your air conditioner uh, even more to keep your house cold. And that's another thing. Um, <clears throat> so those are my biggest money savers. If if you can, I also recommend if you live in a really cold area, an electric blanket uh, for sleeping. That way you can shut off the electricity in the house and you'll still have your electric blanket keeping you warm and your electricity can be off at night. It's gonna be really crappy to get out of that nice, comfy, warm bed, but it will save a ton of electricity. So we've got food, electric, Clothing. So that's one of the things that I want to talk to you about. Um, clothing. So everyone worries about how they're going to pay for their clothes. And then some people are like, well, I go to a thrift store. Now, here's the thing. How often really, I mean, really think about it. How often are your clothes so banged up that they need to be replaced? Now, I understand if you have a husband or child that uh, your husband works at a job where he gets very, very dirty and stained clothing, all, you know, grease spots and stuff like that. Or you have a kid that um, outgrows their clothes. I get that. But me as an adult, I, I just recently came to this realization and I'm just like, I have, first of all, I have way too many clothes. I keep buying new clothes and going through this cycle, right? I'm, I'm buying new and getting rid of old but all of my old clothes are still in perfect condition, free of stains, tears, fit perfectly. I just keep buying new ones. There's nothing wrong with my old clothes. You know, they're not patched up, they're not ripped, torn, nothing. There's nothing wrong with them. I just don't wanna, I just want these new ones more than I want the old ones. So I stopped buying new clothes. And I was, I every time I think, I don't have anything to wear. I look at my 200 shirts that I've got in my dresser in my closet and I go, I don't have anything to wear. There's 200 things sitting in front of me. Not really that many, but there's a million things sitting in front of me that I have to wear and I'm sitting here complaining I have nothing to wear. It's like when your kid opens the fridge and it's packed full of food and they're like, mom, there's nothing to eat. And there's like, you've got a million things in your fridge and in the cupboards and they're like, there's, it's not that there's nothing to eat. It's that they don't want to eat what's there. And it's not that you don't have anything to wear. It's that you don't want to wear what's there. So don't buy clothes unless you're going to wear them until they wear out completely. Stay the same size that you are so that you will not grow out of your clothes. Not, I'm not talking about like kids growing older. I'm talking about an adult. Stay the same size. And once you start not fitting into your clothes, don't go buy new clothes to fit into them. Go on a diet and fit your body back into your clothes. <laughs> it's a good way to stay in shape too. You're like, wow, these pants are really tight. I guess it's time to start doing some more exercise and eating better. You know, it's a, it's a great way to save money. Um, I used to go to the thrift store all the time just looking for stuff to buy and I realized I have a million you know I, I have everything that I need and everything that I want I don't want I don't even want to go shopping for new clothes anymore it's just ridiculous like I'm gonna go but there's a great deal you know jeans at the thrift store are two for five bucks or I could just keep the five bucks I'll just keep the five bucks that's better so be realistic with yourself do you really need new clothes or are your clothes perfectly fine. You just don't want to wear them. If you look in my older videos, this shirt that I'm wearing, I think I wore it four years ago in my videos from four years ago. I'm pretty sure. I've got another shirt in blue, blue with white stripes. So if you see a blue one with white stripes, I bought them at the same time. And I think those videos are from years ago too. Um, so I'm not, I don't, you know, if I come across a pair of jeans that I'm wearing that gets like ripped and torn beyond repair, then I don't even, you know what? I probably won't even replace them. I have too many. I have, I have too many clothes. I do. But yeah, um, I'm not a minimalist, just in case you guys were wondering. 
Um, I do believe in you only having stuff that you use and need, but I'm not a, I'm not technically a minimalist. So let's talk about um, laundry. <clears throat> Uh, laundry with your clothes. So as you can see, I'm wearing a white shirt. It's probably five years old. It's not dingy. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. Now people talk about, I only use Tide Pods. Well, I'm glad that you enjoy your $17 laundry detergent that isn't even necessary. So I did some research several years ago and found out that laundry detergent isn't even necessary. <laughs> The majority of clothes get cleaned during the agitation cycle in your laundry. Um, so laundry soap is not a necessity. I did buy some laundry soap when I first moved here eight, nine months ago. It's called Ariel, A-R-I-E-L, and you can get it. There is a Hispanic section in the laundry detergent aisle at Walmart. And I think I got it for six bucks and it's gonna last me for another two years. After I run out of that, I used to make my own homemade laundry soap with Fells, Naphtha, and Zoat. But if laundry soap is not necessary, I'm not out there working a job that gets me dirty. You know, I'm, I'm not out there fixing forklifts and, you know, shoveling cow poop. I'm, I'm just a desk worker. So, um, once I run out of that laundry soap, that'll probably last me another year or two. All I'm going to do is take these and if, if I have a stain, I'll rub it on the stain and get the stain off. If not, I'm just going to take like a little tiny sliver of soap and maybe put it in the laundry. But I don't even think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to just water and I'm fine with that. People, um, I'm sure there's going to be people watching this who are like, I can't do that. That's disgusting. You have been programmed um, by soap companies to believe that you need soap for everything. You need it to be disinfected. You need soap to be disinfected, to disinfect yourself because you're infected. <laughs> you need soap to uh, sanitize because you're not sanitary. Um, you know, it's, it's, all, um, it's all fake. It's all fake. And it, it's unfortunate that we're so programmed because these companies have been doing this for 70 plus years, longer than we've been alive. And we have been growing up seeing these commercials for things that we... Sorry, folks, it did it again. I started playing U2 music in my ear while I was in the middle of recording. So yes, we have been programmed as a society to believe that we need to buy things that we don't really need to buy. You are so cute. Mommy loves you. We had a really long walk today. Um, so yeah, laundry soap, it is not a necessity. And let me talk to you about body soap, deodorants, blah, 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 blah. Most of it's not necessary. Um, if look, okay. I, you know, shampoo and conditioner, you buy the cheap VO5 and water it down. You say this doesn't work for you, then move on. Um, or wait until the next, the next, uh, thing that will work for you. So I have been buying, I'm a prepper, so I have so many soaps and shampoos, conditioners, and lotions. And the thing is, is that right now, those shampoos, soaps, and conditioners are watered down, you know, half water. I've added like half water to all my shampoos, conditioners, whatever. And then you go and you're like, how can I save on this? Well, first of all, you add water. Second of all, you get a two-in-one. So shampoo and conditioner in one. The next step, you get a three-in-one. Uh, shampoo, conditioner, body soap, all in one VO5. Offers it at the dollar store. A dollar for shampoo, conditioner, and soap. You do not have to wash your hair every day. Most women wash their, most, not all, most women wash their hair once every three to five days. Some do it every five to seven. And most people use shampoo, conditioner, and or leave-in treatment. So what um, I do personally is I wash my hair about once every five days, shampoo and conditioner, that's it. And it is watered down shampoo and conditioner. However, even though I have years of soap left, probably five years of shampoo and conditioner left, once I run out of that, I'm going to stop using shampoo and conditioner. It's called the no poo method, N-O-P-O-O, -O, no poo meaning no shampoo. Tons of people have done it. Some people will use baking soda or vinegar or they'll just use water and put essential oils on their hair. The doctors, you know, Travis Stork, I think it is, the doctors did their own episode on the no poo method and they actually found that the people who used no shampoo had healthier than hair than the people who did. Um, and again, society has, society, corporations, companies have tricked us into thinking that we absolutely need shampoo and conditioner. If you don't use it, you're disgusting. <laughs> Stop.
stop. And if you don't use it, you're disgusting. You're gross, you're filthy, you're dirty, you smell bad. It's not true, I've done it before. So let's talk about uh, soap, right? So soap, body wash, loofahs, all that good stuff. Um, so again, prepper, I've got enough soap to last me five years. Once I run out of soap, I'm not going to use soap anymore. But I seriously think that the soap that I have will probably last me the, le the rest of my life, like no joke. I have that much soap. I've, brought, I've probably got 300 bars of soap and several bottles of body wash. <clears throat> but um, again, companies believe, make you believe that if you, you, if you don't use soap, you're disgusting and you smell bad. Well, it's not true. Um, exfoliating gloves. Um, exfoliating gloves are amazing and I've used them without soap before. And you just use the exfoliating gloves to get rid of the dead skin cells that are on your skin. Um, water is what gets you clean and you ever wonder why you buy this expensive soap and you love the smell of it and it's amazing and then like two hours after you've taken a shower you're like I want to smell that smell again and it's gone because your natural body oils take over um, so soap is absolutely not a big deal to me either I'm just gonna get exfoliating gloves and exfoliate and that's it and again people will be like oh you're so disgusting no I'm not I'm really not and then um, deodorant. So you're such a good boy. Um, I've never used deodorant. I don't smell bad. <laughs> I don't sweat. Uh, there are some people who need deodorant because they either have extremely bad body odor or they sweat profusely. I'm neither of those people. Um, so the only time I ever use deodorant if, is like if I ever need to go to a fancy party or like really fancy, like, you know, you're wearing a dress and your hair's done and your makeup's done and stuff like that. And then I'll use deodorant, but it, I don't even think I need it then, to be honest with you. And again, most, some people are different, but the companies are the ones that are making you think that you're disgusting if you don't use it every day. They really are. Um, you know, we have minds, we have, we have a way to think for ourselves. And even though you've been trained to believe you know, from society and from commercials since birth, that you need these things or you're disgusting or you smell bad, it's not true. It's not true. I've met some people who haven't used soap in years because they have a uh, allergic chemical reaction to it. One person um, can't use any soap. Um, they can't use shampoo, conditioner, they can't use soap. And they're the ones who got me into trying the exfoliating thing and she said, she said that's all she can do. And she never smelled, she didn't smell at all. Um, she did use, no, 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 not right now, not right now, no. She did use, um, I want to say it was like a, some sort of, she used a, like a essential oil in her hair, but it couldn't touch her skin. So she could only do it like at the end of her hair and it was like the only scent she could use. She couldn't use perfumes or fragrances or anything. She never smelled bad, never. She, it was amazing. And again, it's companies that make you think that you're gonna be disgusting if you don't use them. So I want you guys to really use your brain. Do you really need laundry soap if the agitation cycle is doing the cleaning? Do you really need body soap if the, um, the only thing you're trying to do is get rid of dead skin cells? Do you really need shampoo, conditioner, and, and um, leave-in treatment when for 100,000 years before these companies created these products, people lived just fine and they weren't disgusting and dirty and gross. They were normal people. Um, so just please use your, like don't go around telling people because our society is so crazy. Don't go around telling people that you don't use shampoo, conditioner, or soap. Don't tell anyone that, but just don't do it and see what happens. I've done it before. I've done the no poo method and it was okay. Like I, it wasn't, I didn't care either way, to be honest with you. And I'm growing my hair out now. You can tell I dyed it a few months ago, not even a few months ago, it was just like a couple months ago. I'm letting it grow out. I'm, I'm gonna stop with, I think, stop dyeing my hair for a while, at least a year or two. Um, so think about it. I mean, really think about it. And it, I'm sure there's gonna be people in the comment section who are like, you're absolutely disgusting, and that's fine. That's your opinion. Um, any of my friend, close family or friends would tell me if I stunk and I don't stink. I smell good actually. Um, and so you've got that and then do you need to shower every day? Well, scientific studies say that you should only, I personally, I, I shower every day and I know I shouldn't, 
but I do it anyway. Um, but scientific study that you should probably shower once every three days uh, to, what's the word, balance the pH in your oils, your skin or something. I'm working on it, uh, but I do like to shower every day or take a bath every day. It's like my relaxing time. Um, when I'm in the shower, I feel like I'm like in a warm rainforest or something. And then when I'm taking a bath in my three foot garden tub, which is horrible for the environment, I'm so sorry, but I love it. It's relaxing. I, I have my candles. I've got my little starry string lights in there and I, I like doing it. So I'm going to try and not, I'm not really going to try. Let's be honest. I'm not really going to, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Um, so there's that. And then so we've got electricity, yeah, and if you take less showers and, and baths, that'll lower your water bill. You guys should totally do that. It's one of my luxuries, leave me alone. Um, trying to think of other stuff. So uh, those are the biggest ways to save. Yeah. So um, think about your cars. Um, I have liability only on both of my vehicles and most people are like, no, that is absolutely wrong. You should not do that. You should have full coverage. I don't care what you think. A car is a depreciating value the second it leaves the lot. I'm not spending a ton of insurance on money on insurance for something that carries a depreciating value. And I'm sure there's going to be people like, oh no, but if you get in an accident, yeah, if I get in an accident, whatever, I got money. Um, but car insurance to me, it's ridiculous. I am the safest driver on earth. Okay. Not really on earth, but I'm an extremely safe. Stop Rocky. No, not right now. I'm an extremely safe driver and I'm always on the defensive and I've never been in an accident. So, um, and I don't drive much. I have two cars and I don't drive much. Don't ask why I have two cars. I have them cause I want them. When it comes to the car insurance, it's liability only, and I am on technically a multi-vehicle plan. So my second vehicle after gas registration and car insurance, I found because car insurance and registration here in Arizona are so cheap, it only cost me about $4, and it's less than $5 a month in registration and auto insurance and maybe $10 a month in gas, and I do my own maintenance on my Camry. I can't do the maintenance on my Corolla because it's a newer car, and I can't, the, it's too complicated. The, the older, the 98 Camry, I, I, that was my old, it was my old car, now it's my new car, and I know how to do everything on it. So um, I can take care of my own maintenance. Uh, the Corolla, I don't know, maybe I'll get rid of it, maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Um, so there's that. And then, uh, remember most people have, uh, car loans and they have very expensive cars. The average car right now is about $35,000 brand new. Um, and people are, they define themselves too much by their cars and their homes. Uh, get a cheap car. That's, that's all I can say. You know, don't go buy a new car. Don't buy a used car off Craigslist. It's never done. I've never had a bad experience. Uh, buy at the lowest possible point a car that looks nice and has a that runs well and then sell it for what you bought it for you know um i i always budget six thousand dollars well from this point on six thousand dollars or less um will be the price i will never pay more than six thousand dollars for another car in my life however the two cars that i have right now are going to last me in the next 30 years so buy a reliable car with good with a good reputation something that is easy to fix and cheap to fix. Um, you know, don't go, buy, go out and buy a Lambo unless you've got the money for it. When it comes to a house, people uh, love to tell me that I live in a dump. Um, sure, thank you. Thank you so much. My house is paid for. It's paid off. Is yours? Oh, okay. Um, how much are your property taxes again? Oh, they're $12,000 a year. Wow, mine are $433 a year, yeah. What's the minimum wage in your state? Oh, seven twenty-five an hour. Whew! And you have to pay twelve thousand dollars in property taxes, huh? Oh, the minimum wage here is twelve dollars an hour. Yeah, four hundred thirty-three dollars in property taxes a year. That's not a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks for you. 
So go ahead and tell me that I live in a, in a crap hole. I don't care. It's paid for. Everything I have is paid for. I don't owe anyone in this world a penny. <laughs> so I'm just laughing all the way to the bank for all those insulters out there, and I don't care. Um, so we've got that. We've, got, we've gone over pretty much everything. Uh, cell phone, um, carers, cable. I mean, really, it's, you know, phones. It's, it's pretty much, and I mean, how many bills are there really? When it comes to medical insurance, I do recommend shopping around. Um, I shopped around to a, a few different places. Mine is two seventeen a month. It's out of pocket. My job does not provide medical insurance, so it's two seventeen a month, and it's through mine is through Colonial Health. That's what it's called. I'm not recommending them. I, I don't know and I don't use it. I I only have medical for emergencies. Um, I'm not a doctor person. I am. I stay healthy and I eat right. So. Uh, it's like if I break an arm or I need stitches or I need a surgery, then I'll use my medical. But for now, it's just whatever. Um, yeah, you can't really save on like your garbage bill or your sewer bill. So I, I'm not going to go over those. Um, but I do recommend, you know, if you are in a place where you just can't afford to live where you live, you need to move. It's as simple as that. And who cares if people tell you that you live in a crappy house? I'm happy. I'm happy in this house. I like this house. And I never did say that I was going to stay here permanently, but I kind of like it so much I might. We'll see. So, yeah. Um, Cricut Wireless, if you're looking to get a $30 a month plan, that's who I've got. Um, there's other places that do them for lower, but this one has two gigs of data, so that's why I like it. Just in case there's an emergency and like I need to pull out a map. I can still use that two gigs of service to pull up a map. Um, so I think that that's it. This is gonna be probably a really long video, maybe an hour long, but you guys are more than welcome to put it on the background while you're driving to work or, or um, while you're, I don't know, cleaning the house, doing whatever. Um, I guess I didn't really go over entertainment, but the thing is, is that I don't really spend on entertainment. Now, if you're, uh, you know, I mean, entertainment shouldn't cost anything. And to be honest with you, I don't even know where I would go to pay to be entertained. <laughs> um, movie theaters. Yeah, I think the last movie I went to was Melissa McCarthy. That one where, where she sold Girl Scout cookies. That was the last movie theater movie I went to. And so that probably dates how long it's been since I've been to a movie theater. But if you do go, go to a matinee and hide your own candy and drinks and bring them in with you. Just saying. Just put them in your purse or have a purse. If you're a guy, I don't know, hide it in your sock or your back pocket. Um, I don't pay for concessions at the movie theater. If you, uh, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, I just mostly go hiking, biking, frisbee, and everything's free. Basketball, baseball, softball. You just buy a ball, and I've had the balls for years, so it doesn't cost me anything. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you, folks. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.